Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how you can crochet your very own jute basket. Perfect for putting your plants in or for any of those little knickknacks that you've got lying around the house. In this tutorial I will show you how you can customize the size of this basket to suit any of your needs. If that's something that you're interested in, just keep on watching. What I've got here and what I'll be using today is a 100% cotton yarn. This is just in an eight ply. In saying that, you could use any yarn that you like. You could use a 10 ply, you could use a 12 ply, you could use absolutely anything you like. I'm gonna show you how to customize this pattern to suit the materials that you have access to. Next up, we've got a jute twine. Again, you could use any size. I actually don't know what size this is, but as a reference, it's about that thick. This is just a jute twine that I picked up from my local craft store. You could also use rope or any other kind of string of your choice. I've then got my crochet hook. Today I'll be using a seven millimeter crochet hook, but you can use absolutely any size hook you like. Then I've just got some scissors and a darning needle to sew in my ends. And of course I've got my plant of choice, which I'm gonna be making this basket for. In saying that, you do not have to make this pattern purely to hold plants. You could make this basket to hold whatever you like. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop everything to the side for now. And at the moment we're just working with our yarn. So just finding the end. And we're starting off with a magic circle today. I know not everybody likes the magic circle, so please feel free to chain four and join to form a loop if you prefer, but I prefer to use the magic circle. So I'm going in and creating our magic circle, chaining one just to hold it in place. And we're then just gonna rotate it so we're crocheting over that tail to hold it in place and we're going to complete eight single crochets into the center of our magic circle. Once you've completed your eight single crochet into the center of your magic circle, you can go ahead and pull your end to tighten it up. And you should be left with something that looks a little bit like that. If you weren't using the magic circle and you were doing a chain four and then joining to form a loop, it's the exact same theory. Um, you'll be just single crocheting into the center of your loop rather than into the center of your magic circle. You're then going to take your stitch marker or bobby pin in my case and just insert it into that very last stitch that we just completed just so we can keep track of our rounds. Now we're going to take our twine or rope, whatever you're using, and we're just gonna lay it on top of our round just like that. And we're gonna be crocheting right over the top of it. So hopefully you guys can see. So we're now gonna be increasing in the round. So we're gonna be doing two, dub, sorry, two single crochet in each stitch around. And as you can see, I'm just going over the top of the rope there, the jute twine, whatever you're using, just like that. Two single crochet in the next stitch. Two single crochet in the next stitch. And just continuing that all the way around. Two single crochet in every stitch. Working over the top of your twine or rope or whatever you have chosen to use. Moving my stitch marker. And working two single crochet into that very last stitch. I'm then going to place my stitch marker again 
to mark the last row, sorry, last stitch of the round. And now we're up to the second round. I'm just gonna pull that tail just to tighten that center a little bit. Now you'll notice that you've got this end here from your jute or your twine or rope. Just tuck it in behind. We'll deal with that later. Now we're just gonna be increasing around again, but this time we're gonna be doing one single crochet into the first stitch, then two single crochet into the next stitch and repeating that all the way around. So one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochet in the next. Again, one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochet in the next stitch. And as you can see, again, we're working over the top of our rope, jute, twine, whatever you're using. And just repeating that step all the way around. So one single crochet in the first stitch, two single crochet in the next. Repeating that all the way around and I will meet you once we are back at the beginning of our round. Okay, just completing our first increase into that very last stitch, just removing my stitch marker. two single crochet into that last stitch, returning the stitch marker to that very last stitch that we've completed. And that is the end of round two. For round three, we are going to increase again, repeating that pattern again, but this time we are going to be doing one single crochet in the first two stitches and then two single crochet in that third stitch. So one single crochet in that first stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and then two single crochets in that third stitch. And repeating that again all the way around, working over the top of our jute. So I'll show you one more time. One single crochet in the first stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochet in that third stitch. Repeating that all the way around until we end up back here at our stitch marker. And just removing that stitch marker, completing our final increase for that round and popping our stitch marker back in place. So depending on how big you want to make your basket will depend on how many increase rounds you do. I am making mine to suit this plant. So if you're making yours to suit a plant or something specific as well, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your plant and you wanna keep repeating your increase rounds until the base, which is what this is, this will be the base of your basket, is slightly smaller than what you wanna put in it. So for instance, if I pop that down there, and I'm just gonna pop this tin can on top. And I can see that it is slightly smaller than the base of this tin. The reason we make it slightly smaller is because this last round here was an increase round, once you work into those stitches, your base is gonna then be a little bit bigger 
than what it appears here because we haven't yet worked these increased stitches, if that makes sense. So I'm going to stop increasing here, but if you wanted to make your basket bigger, please continue with the increased rounds until you reach the appropriate size. To continue with the increased rounds, what you will need to do is working in exactly the same pattern that we have been. This round that I just completed and where I'm going to stop consists of two standalone single crochets and then the next stitch has two single crochets in the same stitch. So that's my increase stitch. So my next round, if I was to continue increasing, would consist of three standalone single crochets and then my increase. The round after that would consist of four standalone single crochets and then an increase. So you're increasing the amount of standalone single crochets every time you go around, just like we have been here. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Please comment down below if you need any further clarification. Otherwise, if you are following along with me and you wanna do the exact same size, then please continue on with me. So now that I have finished increasing and I've got my base the size that I want it, I am now going to be working just one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. So we're not gonna be increasing anymore, still working over the top of our jute or rope, but we're not gonna be increasing anymore. So it's just gonna be one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. All right, just finishing off the last couple of stitches from that round. Oops. Just removing my stitch marker and working into that final stitch and then replacing the stitch marker, of course. Okay, so once you've finished that round, we're just going to continue with that exact round all the way around until your basket reaches the height that you want it to be. So because I'm working mine for this plant that I have planted in this tin can here, I'm gonna be completing that same round until my basket is the same height as this tin. So if you had a pot or something specific that you were making this basket for, you would just continue with that round until your basket has reached the height that you want it to be. So I'm now just going to go ahead and complete as many rounds as it takes until I have reached my desired height. And again, we're not increasing anymore, so it's just one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And you just continue with that round until your basket has reached the appropriate height. You can't really tell yet, but eventually, once you've completed a few of these rounds, you will notice that your basket will start to take shape. At the moment, I know it doesn't look like much, but trust me, just keep going and everything will work out, I promise. And just remembering that we are still working over our jute for the entirety of the basket. We need that for later. So make sure you don't stop crocheting over the top of your jute or rope or whatever it is that you are using because we need it for later. So now my basket is the height that I wanted to achieve. Um, if we have a look here and I pop my tin can in, you'll see that it is slightly shorter than the top of the can, but that is because we still have to add in our handles. And what I mean by handles is I will show you. This is just one that I prepared earlier. So we're now going to add in these handles. You could definitely leave these off if you wanted to and just continue working until the edge of your basket reaches the top of your pot or the top of whatever you're wanting to put in there. But I like the addition of handles. It just gives it a bit more versatility. You could then, if you decide one day that you don't want to use it for a plant anymore, you could use it for something else. So I'm going to add in the addition of some handles. But as I said, you can leave these out if you want to. 
So the first step in adding our handles is to find the quarters, I guess you would call it, of our basket. First of all, you want to count the stitches going all the way around your basket. This is going to help us to find the middle, I suppose, of the basket and then we'll be able to evenly space out the handles. So I'm just going to go ahead now and count my stitches. Alright, so I have a total of 32 stitches going around my basket. Depending on how many increase rounds you did at the base of the basket will depend on how many stitches you have going around. So I've got 32, which means half of that is 16. So I'm going to find the 16th stitch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I'm just going to place my stitch marker, bobby pin, in the halfway mark. So I know that that's the halfway mark. Pretty much. We're then going to find our quarters. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I know that that is the quarter mark. You might have a different technique to working this out, but this is just what I find easiest. Now what we're going to do is figure out where exactly we want our handles to be and how wide we want them to be. How many stitches you skip in the next stitch will determine how big your handles are. So I have decided that I want my handles to be about six stitches wide. So I'm going to count one, two, three stitches that way and one, two, three stitches that way. So then I know that the handle will be placed pretty centrally to that half of the basket. So one, two, three, I want to crochet into the next one, two, three, four, five stitches. You may wish to place a stitch marker there if you like, but because my bucket basket is so small, it's pretty easy to keep track of. If you were doing a bigger basket, you may want to place a stitch marker there just so you know where to stop um, with your stitches. But I'm just going to go ahead now and single crochet into the next five stitches. So now what we're going to do is instead of single crocheting into our stitches here, we are now going to be single crocheting around our jute or rope or whatever you're using. Okay, so I have left six stitches for my handle width, but we're going to want to do some extra stitches around our jute because we want it to be a little bit raised, if that makes sense. If you were to only do the six stitches that you skipped, that's okay as well, but it just means your handle will be flat like that. It won't have that nice, cute little bump, I suppose. So as you can see from this one that I made earlier, see how the handle kind of goes up a little bit? It's not just flat. I personally like that look. So I'm going to do a few extra stitches around my jute to create that bump effect. If you did just want your handle to be flat like that, you would just do the amount of stitches that you have skipped. But because I like that little bump effect, I'm gonna do a couple of extras. So rather than just doing the six stitches, which is what we'll be skipping, I'm gonna go ahead and do nine. So nine single crochet, just working around our jute and not going into any stitches. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've completed my nine stitches, and then we're going to find the six stitches that we're skipping. So one, two, three four, five, six, and I'm then going to go into that next stitch. So the seventh stitch from where we just left off. So one, two, three, four, five, six, we're skipping and we're going into that seventh stitch. And remember, we're still working around our jute. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
just like that. So then we've got our little handle there, which as you can see, gives that little raised effect, which I think is really cute. But again, you could easily just make it a flat handle if you prefer that look. So now what we're going to do is remove that stitch marker from where we've just completed our first handle. And we're now going to find the quarter mark of our next side. So I'm starting from here, which is the halfway mark. And I'm now counting eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that is my quarter mark. And now we can evenly space our handles. So we know that because we've measured each quarter, we know that this handle is now gonna be in line with this handle and it's not gonna be like this side is really close to the other one and this one's really far apart or something like that. So rather than just playing a guessing game, it's always good to measure where you're gonna place your handles. So now I'm just gonna continue single crocheting up until we reach that halfway mark where the stitch marker is. You can now take that one out because we don't really need it anymore. And now we're just gonna do the exact same as what we just did for this first handle. We're now going to crochet into five stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and I now know that I'm up to that space where I want my handle to be. And now we're just gonna be working around our jute, exactly the same as we just did for our last handle. So we're gonna be completing nine single crochets working around our jute section. Then again, we're counting the stitches that we're skipping. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm gonna go into that seventh stitch there with a single crochet. Again, still working over our jute. And that is our second handle complete. So we can now remove that stitch marker. Keep this one in though, because this is the one that indicates when we've reached the beginning of our round. So make sure you keep that stitch marker in, but the ones that were marking out the handles, you can remove those. So now we're just gonna continue going around our basket with single crochets until we reach our stitch marker indicating the end of the round. Going into that last stitch popping our stitch marker back in. And now we're just gonna go around the basket with a single crochet in every stitch all the way around. This is just gonna thicken our handles and make them nice and sturdy. And that will be the very last round. So again, just single crocheting into every stitch all the way around. Here I am back at the stitch marker here, which indicates we are at the end of that round. And as I said before, that is our final round. So I'm just gonna complete that last stitch. We can put our stitch marker to the side because we don't need that anymore. Just completing that last stitch. And now we can fasten off. So to fasten off, I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut my cotton. Make sure you leave a decent tail so you can sew in that end. And then again with the jute, make sure you leave a little bit of a tail because we're going to tie that off so it doesn't come undone. I then just like to go in with a slip stitch in that next stitch just to tidy it off a little bit. And then I'm just going to insert my hook in there, pull that through and tie that off. Now to finish off our jute, what I'm gonna do is simply just tie a knot in it. You wanna try and get the knot as close to this edge as you can, just to make it as tidy as possible. So I'm just going now and tying a knot in that jute and pulling it tight so it's a 
as close as possible to that last stitch that we completed. Pull it nice and tight. And then all I'm going to do with that end is take my crochet hook and I'm just going to weave it in through here. You will see it, but technically this is the back of the basket, so it's not a big deal. If you wanted to fasten it off a different way, please feel free. This is just the way I found easiest. And it's not super duper noticeable anyway, so don't stress too much. Because that knot's in there, it's not gonna come undone. This is more just to hide the end because I don't wanna cut the end too close to the knot just in case it does come undone. Once you've weaved it in a little bit there, you can then just go in and trim off that end. That's now inside the basket, so don't stress. You could even just leave it long if you wanted to. You won't see it. And now we can just take our darning needle or our yarn needle and thread that cotton onto there and sew that end in. Once that end has been sewn in, you can just trim off that end there. And now remember I said at the beginning that we would come back to those ends later. Well, what I'm gonna do now is just turn my basket inside out and to fasten this off, I'm just gonna simply tie these two bits together. Again, trying to get the knot as close to there as we can. Pulling nice and tight. I like to do a triple knot just to be safe. And then just for extra security, I'm gonna tie this piece of jute in a knot as well, just like what we did for this section. Pulling it nice and tight. I don't even bother to weave this end in, it's tiny, so I'm not gonna bother weaving it in. It's in. It's on the inside of the basket. It's at the bottom of the basket. You could weave it in if you wanted to, but I honestly don't see the point. You don't see it anyway, because it is gonna be on the inside of the basket. This cotton end, however, I do like to go in and sew that one in, just like we did at the top. Once that's sewn in, you can then, again, just go in and trim that cotton end off, turn your basket back in the right way and you are done. How easy was that and look how cute this little basket is. I absolutely love it. I can now pop my plant in there. It's a perfect fit because it was made specifically for this plant which I love you can definitely customize this to put anything you want in there but I love the fact that you can make it to fit what you want to put in there perfectly that's what I love most about making my own baskets but we're done guys how easy was that thanks so much for watching guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and if you do make one of these baskets please share your photos with me on Instagram I love seeing your makes if you haven't already please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of my future videos until my next video stay safe be kind and I will see you next time guys thanks again bye mm -hmm.